All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, today I want to show you how to uh, pretty much draw a shear and moment diagram and also to break this system apart by calculating the reactions and also the internal shear and moment at point C and point D. So first of all, when you look at a problem like this, as you see, we have a distributed uh, forces at this section, which is from about up to three meters and we also have an external force acting downward, five newtons. So this distributed forces, we got three newtons per meters. And as you all see, this is a pen connection. I mean a roller connection, correction, sorry about that. And then we have a pen connection. A roller connection pretty much telling us that there is an actual force. Let's call this B and this A. So we have a BY, this is our reaction, and then we have another one right here, call it AY. This is our first main steps, is determining what are, and since this is a pen connection, we also have a force going that way. Let's call it AX. If we do the summation of the forces in the X, we'll know that AX equals to zero, so we don't have to include it. So now to calculate AY and BY, let's do the summations. Change the marker. Summation and the y direction equals to zero since it's in equilibrium, it's static, and our reference is x, y. Anything going up is positive, anything going to the right is positive. So the summation of fy equals zero. So we have ay plus by minus the distributed force. In this case, the distributed force has a resultant force. The resultant force should be somewhere in here. And the way we calculate it is pretty much find the area of this triangle, which is, in this case, is 1 half times base, which is 3, times the height, which is this case, is 3 newtons per meters. And then we have another force pointing downward, which is the 5 newtons, minus 5 equals 0. So to break this apart, we have AY plus BY minus, in this case, it would be 9 divided by 2, point, which point is 4.5, minus 5 equals 0. As you see, we have two unknowns, but one equation. So now we have to come up with another equation. And the other equation is we need to take the moment at A. So the moment at A equals zero. In my reference is going to be anything clockwise is positive. So starting, since we're taking the moment at M, uh, moment at A, any forces that's acting at A doesn't count. So moving on to that next point. So we have the resultant force, which we said is 4.5. Right? So it's 4.5. So we have 4.5 times the distance from A to the resultant force. And the best way to calculate the resultant force, since we have a triangle distributed force, it is from this 90 degrees, the distance is one third times the actual distance of that distributed triangle, which is three. In this case, we end up with 1. So 4.5 times 1, and then we have plus 5 times 3, and then we have minus by times 3 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 6 equals 0. And from that you can actually solve for by. In this case by equals 3.25 newtons, and from that you can get AY, which I believe equals 6.25 newtons. Alright, so uh, I showed you guys how to calculate the reactions. In this case we got 3.25 and 6.25, and from there we are going to solve for the internal shear and moment at point C. So 
So just a quick review. Whenever you have a bar and you splice it in the middle, this half, you have the moment acting just like that, counterclockwise. And you have the shear pointing downward. And on this side, the moment acts clockwise and the shear is pointing upward. Just a quick review for you guys. Alright, and in this case, as you guys see right here, I broke it apart just to show you. This is at point C, our shear at point C pointing downward. And then we have the counterclockwise moment at C. However, we ran into a little problem because at point C, if you guys see, that we, have, we don't know the actual height of the distributive force over here. So the best way to calculate this right here, which we're going to call it Y, is, I'm sure you guys seen this, the like terms. Looking at the actual triangle, the main distance goes up to 3 meters. And then at point C, which is about 1.5, and we said we call this Y, and this was given as 3. So the best way to calculate Y is to do, uh, I guess, the ratio. We have, and this is 1.5 right here. So we got Y over 1.5 equals 3 over base, which is 3. And solving for y, 3 times 1.5 divided by 3, y equals 1.5. So the actual height of this now is 1.5 newtons per meter. Okay, so now we have, uh, we actually solved for the, the height, which is the 1.5 newtons per meters. Now what we need to do is to solve for the shear at point C. But first, before we do actually solve for the shear at point C, we actually need to solve for the resultant force of this distributed force. Looking at this, you can actually break it apart into a square, I mean a rectangular distributed force, and a triangle. So in this case, let's solve the resultant force for the square, right here. In this case, we have 1.5 times 1.5, which will be 2.25 newtons. And the distance is pretty much what is the, the half of that rectangle, which is 0.75. Okay. Now we need to find the distributed, uh, the resultant force of this triangle right here. In this case, our height is no longer three, but it's actually three minus one point five. So this will be changed to one point five. And now what we do is the distance. What we said is one point five. So it's one point five. To find the resultant force of the triangle is pretty much solving for the area. And the area of the triangle is one half times base, which we said is 1.5, times the height, which is 1.5. So our resultant force will come out to be, in this case, um, 1.125 newtons. So here, Our resultant force is 1.125 newtons. Okay, and the distance, just a quick review for you guys to find the actual distance of the resultant force in a triangle. From this angle, looking at it from this angle, the distance is literally, it, it is 
one third times the base and the distance from the acute angle looking at it this way it would be two thirds times the base so going back into here if we're looking at it they're using the reference from this distance right here so we have two thirds times the actual base which we said is 1.5 in this case this will give us alright so now the distance is after using this as the reference from here it is actually 1 meters so we have the distance for this resultant force the rectangular and then the triangle. Now, after having all this, we can actually solve for the shear at point C by doing the summation of Fy again equals zero. And as we said, our reference, anything up is positive. So looking at this, we have 6.25, and then we have minus 1.125 minus 2.25 minus our shear which is VC equal to zero and from that you can solve for VC in this case VC pointing down way downward 2.875 newtons okay so now we got the shear at point C, and now we have to calculate the moment, which is easy. In this case, all we have to do is moment at MC equals zero. According to this, going clock, counterclockwise is positive. Looking at it from here, since it already has a moment, let's include that. We have MC plus 2.25 times the distance, which we said is 0 0.75, and then we have also plus 1.125 times 1 minus 6.25 times the whole distance, which we said is 1.5 equals to 0, and after you calculate this, MC, the moment, at C equals, I believe, 6 point, around 6.56 newtons times meters. Okay, so there you go. This is how you calculate the shear and moment for at point C. Alright, so continuing on, now we're going to solve for the shear at point D and the moment of point D. Since you guys already know I calculate the resultant force and the distance, we have 4.5 at the distance from reference over here, 2 meters. So as you guys all see right here, now all we have to do is the summation of Y equals 0 in the Y direction, as we always have the reference going up, and now you can say that it is what we have. We have 6.25 minus 4.5 and then we have that external force because the force is acting right on top of point D minus 5 minus VD equals 0. And in this case, our VD equals 3.25 newtons. And then we do the moment. Moment at D equals 0. Positive. Now, since we're using this as the reference, and there's already a moment existing in that area, so we have MD, moment at D. This doesn't count because it's right on it. And then we have plus 4.5 times the distance, which is 2, minus 6.25 times 3 equals 0. And then you will solve for the moment at D equals. I believe is 